Hi, hello, good day. Welcome to the demonstration of Oracle 11G R2 single instance real time activities from R Skill Academy. So, this demonstration we purely cover the contents of this course and also with one of the activities that I am going to deal so that you understand the quality of training and what may, I mean, how online training will be helpful for you. So, this course is definitely available for online offline that is classroom training or even you can buy the video tutorials as well which you will know after this uh, demonstration anyway what what I meant by video tutorials so starting with this demonstration so uh, we are going to deal actually with uh, the completely on 11g r2 single instance real-time activities so this uh, single instance real-time activities the course name itself says that we are going to deal real-time activities on only standalone database server that means do not expect any real-time activities on rack environment or data guard environment we are going to purely deal with all the real-time activities that an oracle dba faces on a single instance environment on day to day so as the name says that we are going to use 11g r2 software version of oracle to understand day-to-day -day activities of a dba and this course is purely for someone who has got the theoretical knowledge on Oracle database and who wants to really uh, get a hands-on experience on the activities what DBS does in real time this course will be definitely beneficial to somebody who wants to learn in that fashion so coming to the details of what are the contents on the course curriculum uh, starting with the installation so as we know in the installation as the name says that it is installation but I'll uh, cover the architectural concepts as well because you know sometimes before I start in reality what is that we will be doing all the activities but before that it is good always to brush up the concepts of architecture as well that's the best practice I feel so. Then we will do an OS level installation and then Oracle database installation and this is the first step that we are going to do because this installation software is what we are going to use. Uh, throughout the course for our activities so this installation will be in such a way that you will be able to reproduce the same installation on your local machines so that means that though you are taking online course or though you are coming to the classroom course or though you are taking a video tutorials or any other course types definitely you will be able to replicate the complete setup on your local laptops or desktops whatever you have got so that you get each and every minute in your hand to practice those activities that's the main motto of having the first chapter on installation phase next we will be covering purely about the data on the data pump activities what are the most frequently uh, frequently given activities for a DBA on the data pump so we will be dealing almost all the possible activities that DBA deals on the data pump next is listener level activities that means whenever there is an issue in the networks so how do we actually handle it is what we are going to deal in the listener activities and the next one is we are going to handle some of the uh, you know um, ad hoc activities like control file backups you know changing the parameters of the database and how do we handle lockings blockings in the database and how do we enable disable archive log mode few set of small activities and the fifth chapter covers completely how do we rename the database and the sixth chapter completes the most important section of you know dba profile is admin backups so how do we optimally take an admin backup how do we perform uh, monitor the performance of the backup and how do we take schedule a backup day to day and what is the best practice to follow etc etc and we will also see the restoration and recovery scenarios as well not just how to take the backup regularly without failure we will also see from the backups how do we restore the database uh, back to its old state is what we are going to de deal and next cloning activities how do we take the complete copy of one database to a remote server by using again Armen. so we can say seventh chapter is also a part of Armen. so sixth and seven chapters completes uh, completely covers the concepts of Armen. and next is table space management everything about the table spaces will be covered here including the fragmentations and next one is user management everything about the users roles profiles everything will be covered in user management and privileges yep all the things are covered next is patching activities we will be seeing how do we apply PSU patches or CPU patches and bug fixes uh, from the Oracle and how do we actually get rid of the problems that we face in day to day is what will be covered in chapter number 10 and in chapter number 11 we will see all the activities related to performance tuning 
as we all understand that performance tuning is one of the challenging areas of DBA uh, but I will try to give you the most eligible approach for any performance issue that we face in real time so I will be demonstrating with the huge data insertion and show you how do we handle that issues whatever we get in terms of performance in this chapter and everything about the flashback activities yes yeah, you know about flashbacking a table or the complete database uh, flashback or you know only one query flashback and how do we handle the issues on top of the flashback will be covered in this chapter and the next thing is table space point in time recoveries and this is uh, you know odd levels odd uh, activity that means you will get once in a while or once in month or once in one year as well so very f uh, of it is not very often activity but still it's good to actually learn these activities because it is little tricky and that will be done using Armen itself. So definitely it is also part of Armen activities. And triggers, uh, being a DBA, we will have to know how to create a trigger and how do we use that trigger in our day to day life. So we will cover that how do we create triggers and how do they, uh, how will be these triggers useful for the DBA is what we will learn. Log miner, yes, definitely it's important when you wanted to query or when you wanted to understand why your database is generating heavy redo log files or heavy archive log files, then definitely we require log miner for analysis and how do we do is will be covered in this chapter. And next again, I got a few set of small activities all together in one chapter and uh, it, it completely covers on SQL loader activities, you know, uh, DB links, usages. Uh, and then you know data loading from a text file or data load from a table etc etc and we will also deal about the external table and table partitioning in chapter number 16 and chapter number 17 covers completely about scheduling jobs please do not get confused with uh, shell scripting in this chapter we are not dealing about the shell script scheduling jobs in this chapter we are completely dealing about scheduling the jobs inside the database using job scheduler that is what will be covered here and then auditing you know how do we audit the database whether it is a table level object level or schema level or all the complete database level what are the different options and what is the best option to choose all these things will be covered and then we know that in the first chapter we have done the installation but we do not do any silent installations there because to save time to cover the concepts more but coming to the chapter number 19 we will be covering completely uh, the software installation and the database installation network installation all together silently that means without using any GUI interface, we are going to learn how do we set up or install all these things because you know there will be projects where always GUI interface will not be possible. So we will have to be ready to install anything on the server silently as well. So we will learn that. And then coming to scripting, I'll just try to explain you guys how do we uh, do the scripting and uh, with, with the help of small examples, though the scripting is again a different course with me, uh, but we will see uh, in reality or in short uh, how do we write a simple scripts for the day-to-day -day activities it includes arm and backup scripts and gathering stats and housekeeping scripts as an example and then we will be performing upgradations uh, from 11.1 to 11.2 10.2 to 10.204 10.204 to 11 and almost all the combinations from 10r22 11r2 will be covered in this complete course or in this chapter sorry and then at the end we will see as a summary what a DBA does every day when he comes to office and before he leaves what is that he will start with and what is that he will end with that is what we will we will be covering in the last chapter and now as we have seen that what are the contents that we are going to deal uh, in the complete course let us see one of the activities now and see how do we resolve that so that you know how do I train you will understand that now consider from my remote machine I wanted to connect to my database which is running on Linux machine so my local machine is on Windows Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm connecting to my Windows machine. This is my Windows machine. So now there is a Linux machine which is running on my VMware already here. So my Windows machine here will be acting like a remote machine with respect to the Linux machine. So from a remote machine, if you want to establish a connection to the database server as sysdba, how do we do that? I will be using easy connect at the moment. Just look at it. Sys followed by the password. And I'll give where is the server and this is the server for me and I'm using the default port number though you though I give this or not it will work and this is my database name and at the end I will give sysdba this is the method now you see there is some issue now the requirement for me is 
I would like to connect from a remote machine, that is my Windows machine, to my Linux machine, which is somewhere else. But at the moment, my Linux machine is on the same system, but is on the uh, on the VMware workstation. So, what is that we are doing now? My requirement is from my Windows machine, I would like to connect to my Linux machine as sysdba using SQL plus to a remote server, which is on Linux. Now, to do that, there is some problem called insufficient privileges. What might be the problem? Being a DBA, the first thing that we will have to remember is for a remote sysdba connections, the first thing which is important is password file on the database server. So this is the database server. I'm first of all setting up the environment variables of it. Let me go to Oracle home slash DBS location and let me check if there is any password file for this or not. No, there is no password file for this a particular database that's the reason you will never be able to connect from your remote server to the Linux server as sysdba this is the first step of looking at the resolution so what is that I'll do I'll create a password file now so file is equals to ora pw ora pw or RDB. This is the syntax naming convention of a password file and password. I would like to have this one and then force is equals to Y. This is only to replace if the password file is existing and entries is equals to five. This is to tell how many sysdba connections or how many number of users can have sysdba privilege. So I have created the password file now. And now the password file is existing. Now let me try establishing a connection from my remote machine. So now there is something else. What is the issue? It is saying that username and password is invalid. Oracle 123 is the password here. And here is also Oracle 123. Now you might think whether I'm giving the, I'm giving the same password, but still it is saying that username or password is invalid. Please remember always this error message might not give you the correct reason for failure the another reason of failure in this scenario might be the parameter so let me check and there is a parameter in the database called remote login password file see this parameter value is given as none this parameter value should be exclusive to allow any sysdba connections from the remote server but what is the error message that you are seeing username or password invalid is that the correct message according to this issue? No. The issue is with the parameter, but not with the username and password. That's the reason. Never expect any error message to give you proper information. This is the best example. Now, how do we change this parameter? I'm going to the next step of resolution. Alter system set. This one is equals to exclusive. And then scope is equals to both. Will it change? No. Why? because this password uh, remote login password file parameter is a static parameter so definitely to change this parameter value we require a downtime that means a bounce of the database is required so i'll change this in the sp file and then i'll just bounce it off so let me try now and after i start this system now i will be ready to see uh, to re-establish a connection now so let me start it up now, once database is open, I will just check in the listener if the services are registered, LSNR CTL status. Yes, I can see ORADB service name is registered in the listener. Now, I will try to establish the connection. Now, it has established. So, what was the first problem I identified? The first problem was password file not existing. For that, what was the error message you were getting? Insufficient privileges. After I created the password file, next time when I tried to log in, I got a message saying that username or password invalid, but I know that password is correct and username is also correct. Then I thought of issue from the parameter. Then I identified that there is a problem with one of the parameters which is required for the remote logins is remote login password file, which was none. I changed it to exclusive. I bounced the database because that is a static parameter. And then after I bounced the database, I was able to connect to the database from the remote server as sysdba. So this is only one of the activities that you can call or you can say that this falls under listener activities. So this is one example to showcase how the mode of training and the level of training would be. So everything would be related to some of the issues that you might see in real time.
so if you are if you like this uh, mode of training and if you are interested to get trained on all these topics in the same way you can enroll with us you can click on enroll button that you find in the same page and you can fill in your details and submit it we will get back to you as soon as we have some batch ready or whenever there is a batch upcoming and apart from this if you want to reach us uh, anywhere i mean from anywhere if you have any questions you can drop an email to enquiry@school.com and for every for more information on blogs and all you can find it from www.orschool.com and if it is for blog you will find blogs inside this website as well and to contact us directly 9951696808 and you can also reach us on whatsapp for faster communications and you can also find us on facebook here and twitter here thanks for hearing to this demo session so hope uh, you will get back to us uh, for the course to get the course details thank you once again have a good day bye bye before i close this demo i would like to show you what advantages you get from this demo uh, from this course as well uh starting with the first advantage is uh you will get the complete course document so i will be running through the course document for this uh, complete course wherein you will have the steps in detail for each and every activity you will get that document in detail and the next important thing that you will get is the putty log file whatever you are seeing on the screen is my putty session and once you get out of this putty session i have created a putty log file for this that means whatever commands i am typing on this putty session will be logged for your future references so how does that putty log file will look like so it looks like this so every command that i have typed on my putty session is actually captured even with the you know or our pwd whatever i have entered so far everything has been logged into this putty log file so this particular file will be shared to you on a day to day basis just after the session uh, every day session so you will get that as your additional bonus and the third advantage that you get from this course is whatever i am training in the course will be captured in a video so you will also get the video recordings along with the course every day so that if you did not understand part of the session in the complete uh, you know complete uh, duration you can actually play back the same video in the uh, in the, with the url that we are going to share and in that you will you will you will play the same video whatever we have gone through the complete session so that you get the help yourself that's the benefit that you get so thanks again thanks once again see you have a good day and hope to see enrollments if you are interested